Good morning, folks. It's a big news day. First, if there was ever a video to give a thumbs up, or a favorite, or a share, and if there was ever a release of mine I'd ask you to spread, it's this one. This is our first press release, and I don't mind saying it's worth sharing. We've been predicting earthquakes here for three years, with accuracy. It's one of the reasons those subscriber numbers are so high. So we decided to try to prove it using solar polar magnetic fields. You will read how Dr. Holloman of the Ohio State University Statistical Consulting Service developed the algorithm. You will see how we nearly doubled the accuracy expected if there was no correlation. And of course, Dr. Wu Yen has agreed to help us understand the mechanisms of the solar polar earthquake trigger. You can read it on our website or go directly to the document. You can print it, download it, and as I said, sharing is encouraged, including for monetary gain. I'd like to ask for your help in sending this to news outlets, traditional and online. We would really appreciate your getting this out of the darkness and into the light. The analysis is retrospective at this time and cannot yet predict earthquakes, but all involved are quite confident that we can be fairly certain now. The sun triggers the largest earthquakes on our planet. Speaking of earthquakes, you might remember that we're in a significant quake watch right now, and boy did it just kick in. I was incredulous of the initial magnitude given for the Micronesia quakes, but USGS has upgraded the magnitude of the larger rumble to 6.9. We also saw a 6.1 in China just this morning. More on the watch in a bit, but first... Happy birthday, New Star! Celebrating two years of delivering fascinating releases like this one of a dying star and their latest release, Radioactive Titanium Blue in a Supernova. Sticking just with the tropical storm watches for weather today because there are quite a few. Our two Pacific storms are still strong, heading for Korea today and the other still waiting to charge north of Japan. Then, Notice the Central Pacific storm and another low to the east of it. The first now calls for a significant alert at Hawaii, while the other is about to get named, likely today. Across the Caribbean, we're watching Bertha leave and ready to shoot north off the coastline, with another disturbance a bit closer to Florida. Going to near-Earth space, we are still seeing faster solar winds of the coronal hole stream, which now almost definitively gobbled up that little CME we expected. Remember from yesterday, another is on the way, and our shield is teetering with a touch of instability. Those weaker sunspot groups indeed stayed weaker and failed to produce more flaring. We're in low sea range, and that may or may not change today as the sunspots appear to have regained a little bit of complexity. Perhaps it'll continue, while the northern incoming group appears to at least be somewhat complex. The current earthquake watch is based on the Corona Hole extending down from the North Pole here. She's maintained a good bit of force, and so has the Southern Extension incoming this week. We also added the geocentric conjunction of Mercury and Jupiter along with a peak in sunspot numbers. Hopefully China and Micronesia capped off our pressure release, but the watch must remain in effect another few days. Again, folks. Please share that article, send it to your local news, your favorite online outlet, your state's associated press office, anything you can do to help drive this new branch of solar science, of space weather, of geology. This work belongs to the observers, all 188,000 of us. Let's show the world what we've been building for the last three years. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.20 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.